Apple released the developer beta 2 of all of their software, which includes Sequoia and the iOS 18, which adds the ability for iPhone mirroring. If you don't know what iPhone mirroring is, it allows you to mirror your iPhone directly on your Mac. And it's actually an app and it's called iPhone mirroring. So as soon as I launch this app, you will see it's connecting to, it's not your iPhone, that is the name of my iPhone. Now it just went ahead and connected, so everything's working right there. Now the way this normally works, and I'll put up some screenshots when you first launch it, it does go through a little tutorial on what how it works, and then it also asks you to unlock your iPhone just for security purposes, just to make sure everything's good there. They don't wanna give somebody that has access to your Mac access to your iPhone. But once you have the iPhone displayed on your Mac, you can no longer use your iPhone on your phone. So if you look right here, it says, iPhone is being used by Brian's MacBook Pro. If I was to unlock it, it automatically removes it from the Mac. So you can't have it on both at the same time. And you can even see there's a settings that popped up right there. But once I lock it back, um, I can go ahead and say try again, and now it will reconnect. So what's the benefits of this? Well, you can get access to some apps that you would not have on your Mac, which is kind of nice. One of them is this clear to do. This widget kind of gave me that ability. This is an iPhone widget displayed on the Mac. So I have the ability to access these from there, but it doesn't always work the best where in here I can just launch this and I have full access to everything on the Mac right here. So I can go through the whole list. I can slide down, go through all my lists and just have access to everything. I can set a reminder. So if I come in here, I can say, remind me at 825 to subscribe to me, of course. You wanna subscribe, don't you? And you can do that by just tapping the button right down there. Now, the weird thing is, is like you can't swipe up on the iPhone to actually close the app itself. What you do is if you hover over right above, then you get the menu bar. And in here you have two other buttons. This button right here will actually get you to the app switcher view. And this other one is your home button. So hitting it will take you back to home. So just, it's, it's interesting. There's no, like I can hit this right here and minimize the app. There's no stretching this out basically just displays as large as your iPhone. There's no way to drag and kind of increase the layout. I haven't tried this. Yeah, that doesn't do anything either. So, you know, it's, it's very minimal. You will get notifications when your iPhone's connected. You can actually have notifications that will pop up on your Mac as normal. And once you click on those, it will launch the app on the iPhone in your Mac. Now there are a few issues with doing this. So as you can see, everything works fine going through it on my Mac with my trackpad. So I can scroll through Instagram, no problem. All that's working great. But if I try to use my, my MX Master mouse right here, this will not work. The scrolling just doesn't work. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if this is just a bug or if this is how Apple's going to do it. I have a feeling that this may just be the way it works. So it doesn't matter how much I scroll or which way I scroll, nothing with the scrolling works. So if you have a desktop, keep that in mind. If you don't have a trackpad or even just the magic mouse, the magic mouse works fine. So I can come in here, I can scroll through Instagram, no problem with the magic mouse, but the MX master mouse from Logitech does not want to scroll or interact at all. Now I can still click, like the clicking functionality works no problem, but the, the actual scrolling just does not work. So that is one thing to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is if you use Sidecar with an iPad, uh, I can come right in here and go screen and I want to say display settings. It doesn't even look like it's showing me the option right now. There it is. I can select my iPad. 
but it will not connect. So the way this works is it's basically kind of the opposite of Sidecar. Sidecar extends your Mac to your iPad. This extends your iPhone to your Mac. So you can't run both, just like you can't do Sidecar twice, you can't do a Sidecar and the iPhone at the same time. Just one of those like, oh, I wish that would work because I use Sidecar like all the time on my setup, but it just won't work as a setting for this. It's just the way they have it set up. I guess it's to make it to where it's as lag free as possible. Um, I can go ahead and go into YouTube. The cool thing is, is like if I was to play a video so I can come into my subscriptions, uh, let's go to, so, so it's playing, let me turn it down a little bit. It's playing the audio. It looks great. I wonder if I can rotate. I don't think you can. Let's see. Window, center. Let's see what Phil does. It just puts it right in the middle. Move and resize, top 11. So that's just... So it also doesn't appear that you can do... Let's see if I hit this. So there you go. So when you're in an app that is full screen, you can rotate it if you go into video mode. It will pop it up there. I didn't see any other way to do it. So that's kind of interesting. I'm guessing if I close out, it will just automatically rotate back. But the audio plays through on your Mac, which is really nice and just really cool. So you get like no lag, no issues there. It works really great. So the great thing about this is, is just being able to interact with your apps without having to pick up your iPhone. It's definitely probably a smaller use case but it can be pretty beneficial if there's something to where you, you only have an app that is on your phone that you want access to on the Mac itself. Um, and like I said, the notifications normally would come through. I don't think I've gotten any while on here, but normally you can get notifications that pop up. Um, this NBA draft one, let's see what that does. There you go. So these NBA draft ones are uh, iPhone notification. And as soon as I clicked on that, it opened up the app on this little iPhone mirroring screen. So those are just kind of fun, kind of cool the way it works. Just being able to see those notifications and click on stuff quick and easily. So if you're looking forward to this, it does work. It does have some caveats, but overall it's just, it's fun. It's a new addition to the Mac to kind of give you access to some of those things that you normally wouldn't have access to. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, feel free to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.